Hi, how's everybody doing tonight? I have an awesome treat. I went to Goodwill and I found another Wilson profile. Uh, it is, let's see, I have a little label in here. And the last time this racket was strung, it was strung with Gamma Gut 2, 52 pounds on the first 11994 and recommended stringing 794. So this racket was strung 30 years ago. And the reason why I say I like playing with these rackets, and I, I can't find rackets that even close to this thing, as I like the stiffness of it. It gives you the power that you need. You can hit top spin. Well, it's really basically for somebody who has a semi uh, top spin approach. So it's what you just hit it, just enough to get the ball over the, over the net. But your flat shots are real powerful with this and volleys are amazing and you can even do touch. And as I said, the only thing I don't like, of the two things I dislike about the, the, the way this racket is, is it's handle heavy and it's just really thick. So when you're, you're hitting your slice serves, you know, you're practicing slice and kick serves and stuff like that, you can easily frame the ball. And I seen uh, back in the 90s, I seen Agassi playing with Don, a Don A, I think it's not Don A, and it was similar to this. It was a real huge wide body racket. And he was playing this guy, Brian Sheldon, who was a big player out of Georgia. And he, um, he, just, he was just hitting like shit with it. He literally broke the rackets and in the middle of them, he was he lost the first set 6-4 and he was getting murdered in the second set. It was like he was a like four four love. Uh, he just was framing everything off the off the frame. And then at that point he just went over, put all of his rackets and broke them. <laughs> and then um, you know, went back to his uh, other thinner racket. Now as I say, if I at this these people are doing uh Demont Demetria, I don't know how to pick, pronounce the word. D I A M T E R uh, Demetra or Demetra or whatever. Um, they make custom rackets. I was asking if they make like if they literally make custom rackets. I would send this racket in as pro, you know, as the prototype, and I just want it thinner, and I don't want no weight, no weight in the handle. But I want this. I want it made of Kelbar, and I want it the same stiffness, just a little thinner. And uh, as I say, people were talking about. You know how these pros are hitting so huge and so they have the best strings and they have rackets that are tuned for their style and most of the players that you see on youtube and also in the pros that are real good players they play with heavier rackets those rackets are like 13 ounces dude 350 grams this thing's like almost 370 it's a heavy racket it, you know so when you just bring your racket and hit through it hot. Plus, I had a conventional, but it's not even the point. I mean, just the ball just flies off the rack. And that's when you know, I put a little toss kit, but those last ones were flat shots. But just effortlessly, you can just hit through the ball and, and you get a lot of pace. So, what I'm working on is I'm going to be working on extending, making sure that my rack is back here when I hit and get through it. I'm practicing doing that. And if if you're trying to practice pronation, um, a good drill is you hold your racket in the conventional style as you're playing, and you drop a ball, and then practice hitting through it like that. If you hit down on it and just practice doing that. And that will help you with pro pronation. And we used to practice those shots when I was in high school and junior and stuff because it would be a defensive shot. So when you hit a ball, you run by it and then you're like you're just trying to scoop it up off the ground, you know? But also what you're doing is you're practicing, you know, pro, pro, with the pronation of the racket. You want to have that going because that's where all your spin comes. But the more you get into it like that, the more spin you'll have on it and the more uh, control of the ball. So I was been putting so much, I was doing like the half one before. Like even Gay Burger, if you watch his old videos, how you can serve like that. Just start like that and then throw the ball up. But I'm just gonna practice getting through it. And you hear it come off the frame?
strings are 30 year old strings and these rackets are made so well that they don't the frame doesn't die after years of playing with rackets the frames start to get warped and die these things are solid and they're never gonna i mean 50 years from now you'll still you'll still be able to play with it place I'm not making excuses I'm just saying I, all that stuff going on you have to I have to still concentrate on what I'm doing out here and I don't care what anybody says about how I play or anything like that because you can always come down here to Port Orange Florida and we can play any, I'll play anybody I don't care who they are uh, I don't have an ego like that but uh, we're have a channel to help people and I'm trying to do my best to get back in shape, tennis shape, and also help people that are in worse condition than I am, that just need to have a, you know, have somebody there for them. To give you an instance, not because you're my guy, you can, you're my people. This morning when I woke up, I felt so depressed because uh, I have bipolar, and I don't take medicine for it. I just uh, been taking vitamins and changing my diet, but I felt so depressed and so so lonely, even though I have. My roommate living with me, Chad, he's my friend from high school, and my girl that I've been with for nine years. I just felt lonely and isolated. And I started praying, thinking of God, and thinking about, because I'm 52, and I'm like, well, am I just going through this because I'm older and I'm thinking about regrets that I could have done this, or could have done this, that, or this or that. And then I'm like, okay, the devil's messing with me. I have to break out of this. So I got my tennis rackets together. I watched a little tennis with intuitive tennis and crew, and then Winston had a little chat, a, a tournament that he played against this fellow that's uh, gonna be playing, uh, trying to get the US, USC. And it started making me feel better. And uh, I came out here and I've been hitting for about an hour now and uh, practicing. And um, I feel better, you know, but I just will share that with you because there's gonna be days where you just don't feel good and you still have to get off your ass and do something, okay? It's tough, I understand, and that's why I share this with you. Manic depression or bipolar is tough. I have a high IQ, I've been tested, you know, my IQ is like 145, I, you know, and I, I, I'm really good at reading and comprehending and when people say stuff to me, I, memor I can memorize stuff, but, um, you know, I have, um, disability you know sometimes concentrating and having this this depression go through my life like this because I've been through some stuff you know I had I've had a lot of trauma things post-traumatic syndromes coming at my way and I've gotten through it you know through, through Yahweh uh, Yahshua the Hamashiach Christ Jesus he, uh, he loves us and I come out here with my little phone and my iPhone and my tripod and I video myself making an idiot out of myself trying to learn how to play tennis again and I enjoy doing it and I gotta go get this light folks so uh, I think the other light is off well I don't think it'll make a difference because I'm gonna hit uh, I'll hit me from over there but uh, the cones are here so you see these cones we're gonna try to do what I was doing yesterday but we're trying with this racket and man these strings are the gamma I didn't even know these uh, I don't even know if they're still in business but these strings are 30 years old, and they still, you can still hit with this. I mean, you can just hear the ball coming, the, the ball coming off of this racket. Just flipping it down the middle. That's like a corner shot. I mean, just pounding the thing. And I'm not even standing into it. Yeah, I mean, like I say, there's a few things that I disliked about it, but it, I'm going to try to get these things strong, and I'm looking to see about a tournament, any tournaments are coming up, and I'm going to try to play in one and see how I, how I do it. That's, that's what I want to do right there, and I haven't been hitting for serves out here with you guys. These are all second serves I'm practicing, because uh, 
one, I don't even know how I'd be able to control the ball the way that I hit my serve. And I mean, it'll be flying off this racket. But I want to learn how to control the ball with this wider racket on, on serves because I think I have an advantage. Anybody who plays with a racket is stiff, you have an advantage, especially on return serve. People can blast the shit out of the ball. <laughs> Excuse my life. They can smash the ball at you as hard as they want. And you just put your racket on it, you're going to get it back over the net. tear your knee up really bad and it's just not a good technique. Balls fall apart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here because uh, I'm gonna set this set it up over set the balls up over here. There's about there's 62 balls in there. I've already hit two buckets of them on serves. And what I do is just to work on my technique and stuff is I call it what you call mini tennis. So I'm gonna go over there, sit there. She's looking all this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> This is just, that's just, just hit, you know, a few balls. And I'm, I'm 52 per year old person. I'm out of shape. And I couldn't imagine somebody like Crew or that Simon fella playing with a racket hitting serves with this thing. And that other dude, Ryan, that plays on Wu's channel, they would be cracking a ball at least 115, 120 consistently. You wouldn't even see the ball come over the net. <laughs> That's how strong this is. They probably would end up breaking tennis balls. They probably need a case of tennis balls to play because they would end up breaking about, out of 36 balls, there'd probably be 25 of them be breaking during rallies. <laughs> and I'm really surprised these strings haven't popped yet. I used to be, you know, I had a big serve for my height, and a real consistent. I was a consistent serve, especially when I played tournament. And my strength was my speed. I could get to the ball, anticipate, and my return serve. And I played with these rackets a while, you know, growing up. Then I went to the Prince, uh, I think it was, the Prince Graphite 2, what Michael Chang was playing with. I liked that racket too. Then I went to the Pro Staff, and I was playing with the Pro Staff for a long time. And then of recent times, when I just started playing tennis again, I had a few of these rackets in my, you know, my old school rackets in my, my bag. <laughs> Dusted them off. <laughs> And then uh, now you know we're out here, you know, every I try to come out as much as I can. And the weather's been crazy here in Florida. The other day, dude, it was 40 degrees, 35 degrees, freaking cold, damp, you know, and rainy and nasty. And then two days later, it's 80 degrees and it's, you know, cloudy and stuff. And then I'm like, I'm like out here sweating like a, like a farm animal, you know, like an Egyptian slave. I'm sweating so bad. And got all this stuff is coming out of my body, you know, from bad food I've eaten all my life, pretty much. Well, I wouldn't say bad food. I eat, like, regular meat and, and rice and things like that and fish. My favorite food is really smoked salmon. I love that, man. Uh, I put that on crackers and bagels and cream cheese. You know, grew up with that stuff. And uh, I've been trying to do my diet with uh, fruits and nuts and berries and things like that. Lemon water in the morning. 
these types of things. But the most thing I, I, I start trying to do the most is jogging again. Just the adrenaline of jogging gets my, gets my heart going and it makes me feel good and stuff. So um, I'm happy you guys are helping me get through these times in my life. And I'm hope, hopefully I can help you guys share these stories with you. Just don't let your, see the thing about this whole situation in life. People won't know that I'm a religious person. And they ask me, they say, Sean, how do I get closer to God? And how do you know, things like that. One, you have to read, read the Bible or, or listen to it on audio or whatever. But the main thing that every person has in life is their ego. Your ego keeps you from uh, experiencing a spiritual, uh, you know, connection with the maker, uh, the, the most high. So when you can release and get detached from your ego and material things, you become more spiritual and it gives you an inner strength that cannot be uh, explained. It can't be, uh, there's no, there's nothing in the world that can replace that. It's a natural adrenaline and uh, that's why sports are so awesome. You get that adrenaline when you play sports. But when you feel the presence of God in your heart and you let go of the ego, as I am right now sharing stories, because most people are going to share stories. You know, I see crew sharing stories uh, about doing the hair. They have a hair program where to help fellas grow their hair. Now, I don't have a problem with my hair like that. And I'm proud of people that come out and try to help others, but my hair is gray, man. <laughs> I got a lot of gray hair. I took care of my mom for 10 years before she passed away. She she needed my assistance. So it was 10 years out of my life. I didn't have no dating. I didn't go out with girls. I didn't do nothing. I just was there with my mom helping her, and I was working and stuff. But I got gray, gray hair, and I'm only 52. And my friend, uh, Chad, he's going a little bald, you know, and he, he looks like uh, he's got the same kind of hair as... Um, um, the famous actor uh, Christian Slater, you know, and he he's got he's self confident about. I'm like he's got I mean, his con his confidence is, is a little shook, and I told him, hey, you know, you could get vitamins to help, and there's programs out there to get you some hair. You know, like don't be that's to me, that's the ego. That's what I'm saying. You're made in a certain way. I have many imperfections. I got big nose. I just got plain old brown eyes. I'm only five seven. You know, I can go on and on, but that's who I am, and that makes me who I am, and who you're, how you're me is me, it makes you who you are, you know? Who you are isn't, what you look like and stuff isn't really who you are. You are spirit, and your spirit is, is this is just a body that your spirit's in. It, your spirit, your spirit is, is way more powerful than this body, and that's what gets these you know, you ever seen guys like that guy's got heart or that girl's got heart, they got a fight in them. That's a warrior spirit, and that's what you what you want because they they let go of the of the of the ego in the material world. And right now they're in a in a zone with tennis, so um, that's 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 my advice, you know. Don't don't let people put you down because of the way you look or and don't get so inside your ego that you can't play tennis and get angry and throw your racket and stuff because you're being a macho ego is going to keep you from growing as a person and growing as a tennis player. So when you make mistakes on a tennis court, you just walk away from them and just go on to the next point and play the best you can play and be yourself and be happy and, and kind to people. Um, it's easy to be mean and nasty. It takes strength to be gentle and kind. So that's the things that you need to work on as a person, and so do I, and that's why I go through these things with you. So I don't want you to feel like you're alone. You're not alone. I'm here with you, and I, and believe me, I've, I've seen a lot of stuff in my life. I've seen a lot of death. I've seen a lot of, you know, agony. I worked in an ALF facility for a while, and it, it, it was tough, you know. I'd come home when I was in my 30s after seeing what I'd seen and go to my cabinet, got myself a bottle of Jack Daniels, put a couple of ice cubes in it, a couple, you know, fill it up and sit at the, you know, sit at the table and watch baseball or whatever with a rolling rock and, and some whiskey and just sip and just think about the day I just had, you know, because it was so brutal. But I don't do that anymore. I drink water because I have epilepsy and I got to watch that shit so I can't, you know, have, a, have alcohol in my life like that. But it's just saying I've been through it. So anything I can ever do to help you with anything, I'll do my best, you know. So I just want you to know that. Just besides, we're playing tennis. We're family, and we're trying to get better at things. And that's what we're working on. We're a kid, too. I've always been playing, so I'm not slacking too much. I've always got an hour and a half out here. Uh, I'll be hitting tennis balls.
These rackets were at Goodwill, right? And if you can see what I was talking about, when I string my rackets, I'll string my mains tighter and my and my crosses looser. Well, somebody did that. It looks like a one-string pattern too. And you see how that's oval? See how it changed the shape of the racket? See the difference? You see the difference? You see how it's look a little bit more oval? So they're trying to get that sweet spot there. And this is a little more and this grip we were talking about how I was playing with a four and a half grip and I found a four and three eighths so this is what I was just hitting with just now and this is a four and a half and somebody did a decent job with their grip on here and it's got a little couple of mix on it but these were only five bucks and as I said back in that day they were $200 rackets off the shelf not even strong so they were expensive back in the day and 40 years later 35 years later, I'm still out here playing with them. And I'm sure there's other some really good players that play with this racket too. But when you string your rackets on the mains tighter than the crosses, it brings the racket in. Uh, there's a couple guys on here, I forget the fella's name. He's really good, he just, he gets rackets and strings them and tells you all about the different types of strings. Uh, top spin tennis, that fella, it's good about uh, strings and stuff. So, you know, if you have questions on how, what types of strings that people should use, they're in the more modern stuff. I have basic topspin, and um, you know, I use a 16 gauge when I do mine on the, on, the, uh, on the mains and a 17 on the crosses. So that's something I've been trying to do, mess around with the strings like that. And I've been doing that for a while. And I had my own stringer, had a little kelp, kelp clipper mate. I used to string my own rackets. So, and then I'd get a bunch of BOA 66, which was natural gut. And then they had a uh, pro blend. We're gonna hear this. See that? Hear it? This one's got a little, a little magic to it. So, anyway, that's. Uh, I'll try to hit with this thing, but it's, it's the spot. The spot is right in the middle there. It, it's, see how it's oval and how that. Just uh, something I was showing you about. Oh, this guy don't want to get hit by a tennis ball.
Because of the, because of this, uh, the way this racket's made, and as I say, just trying to work on my my technique. Bugs down here in Florida are big enough to pick up a boat wagon. Spinning, just a little spin, continental grip. 
Well, gonna round off these balls, folks. And probably caught even. I got out here, it's, what, it's eight, quarter to eight. I got out here around 5.30. So, two and a half hours of uh, doing this. Hit four, four buckets of balls from back here in the front and I just started hitting main sources now. But for some reason I'm having problems with the way my toss is to get the angle that I need. It seems like I'm hitting the ball the right way, but when I look at the video, I'll, I'll try to fix it you know, the next time I come out. And let's take a couple swings at this thing. Just see how these went. strings are. What we think. I don't know why you said goodbye. I say hello. Hello, hello. That's what we're doing, folks. In a long, long time. It's fast. Yeah, um, like I say, it, 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 the, he the handle, man, it's just so handle heavy. It's just, look at that. Look at that. That's crazy. practice a lot with the code on the other side. playing people to hit with a lot of top spin because I say I play around the baseline and I'm short so when the ball bounces up I'm already you know as it's coming up 
That's how I was taught how to play. Uh, is your footwork has to feel real good. You have to have good foot, footwork like Nick was saying in Drew. Uh, when they were teaching. They were teaching uh, Drew was teaching Woo. That's funny. Crew was teaching Woo. And they were getting down on tennis court. Pickety pickety bag. You know how old MTV rap show. So, like basic people, like people what they're doing. They're standing here. They got the backhand right. Right, you're right. You're waiting on your back end. You're standing there, and people go like this to step into the ball to hit backhand. And they got their racket like this, you know? So, what you're doing is you're taking all your power away, and it's just not proper technique. And it's a lot easier to, to do this. See, you got your back foot like that, and then right through it. So I bring my racking about right here, and then see how I got my knee and my foot, and then my let this arm stiff like that. As I was gonna hit a backhand, two hand backhand. You can bring it back further if you want. I see people dip it, you know, they drop it, they dip, drop it like that, they start the racket like that, and then bring it up. I always was taught to bring my racket up like this on my backhand, and then hit through it like that. And then your elbows, when you fall through, should be over there. So the ball comes, you try to fall, you're sizing it up, you hit through it, and you got your, like that. Same with your forehand. Ball comes, you got your bracket like this. Well, that's how I do it. And then you hit through the ball. I bring my arm back like that a little bit. And then I hit through it like that. Drop the ball and then get through it. Your eastern grip. Get through it. Get the ball down. Try to hit angle. A little good. Ball down. Hit down the line. And if you, when you stop following through, is when you make your mistakes. You can know that you missed the shot. At least fall through it. Bring your arms and let your body work together as one and get that's called timing and footwork. And if you work on that and you get that down, your game can be on real. And you, be, you have to be relaxed. You have to be relaxed when you're striking the ball. And I see a lot of people holding their breath when they're, when they're playing. They go, and they hold their breath. Now, I was taught how, when I, in baseball or anything in contact sport, I was taught when the ball comes, I'm breathing in and you hit, let the air out when you hit it. Like that. Nice breath, nice, smooth. That's why people grunt. And back in the day, the first person to ever seen grunt like that, like they do now, was Monica Sellis. And I saw her play at the Chiquita Skane. And you can hear this lady three three uh, sets, you hear three quarts over, four quarts over, you can hear her grunting. And uh, boy, she smacked the hell out of the ball, that lady. That crazy asshole that stabbed her in the neck. I've never seen anything like that in all the days of my life. Just a little kid sitting there uh, on changeover and some maniac and Steffi Graf you know there was an investigation because this guy was sending her letters telling her that she was he was gonna do bad stuff to Monica because she, she couldn't beat her like uh, she just would eat Steffi serve up and, and it just then that not talking lightly Steffi's one of the greatest women champions I've ever seen play tennis and nobody's better than in my opinion and women tennis than Martina Navatilova I loved watching that lady play, and to this day, I love watching her play doubles and stuff. She is a cool-ass lady, and just a phenomenal player. She's the woman version of John Rackenroll. They're even left-handed, and I've seen them two play together on the same team and stuff, and they have they have a lot of fun. I think she's got to control John a little bit. She's like, come on. I mean, I gotta, she's got a temper, too, but uh, when she argues, she's really, but for them people, when they were arguing about line calls and stuff, 99% of the time they're right. They knew as soon as the ball comes up, the racket, if it's good or not. 
But if you get a chance to watch Martina Navis a little bit play in her flying, and if you're a younger person and you hit with two hands on both sides, watch Monica Sellis play. It's just something that's a phenomenal that way that lady used to play ball, and uh, she, killed, she killed it. And uh, she walked away. I actually liked uh, Hingis, too. She was just a little messed up. See, it's what these parents do to these kids. I seen that firsthand when I was training kids. Some kids just don't have uh, the athleticism to, to, to be at the top levels of football. They can play juniors or juniors, but when you get to the pro, you got to have some kind of athleticism. And luckily, all my life I've been an athlete, so that kind of helps me out a little bit here. You know, I can get away with some, you know, some sloppy techniques because of my athleticism. But, uh, you know, obviously, I'm not trying to do that. That's what I was telling you about. Like, I'm working on really getting my back because I used to... I used to sort of like this, you know, go in there and then jump into it, you know. But as I got older, I modify it. I still got my legs bending. I'm still using the same thing, but not as so extreme with a stance. It's a little more closer, a little easier for me. So that's that's what I'm doing right now. I'm hitting some tennis balls with this. I'm gonna see about trying to get a custom racket made, oh, just a little thinner, just like this. And I tell you, it would be cool to hit with that thing. It'd be really nice. Plus, it's a heavy, it's, it, it, you can hit a heavy ball with this thing. I like that part of it. Daytona 500 is coming up or, uh, pretty soon. That's why I see all these RVs. Unfortunately, this guy can't build a park here tonight because the, the park rangers are going to come out here pretty soon and shut the lights off. the ball this as I say when I get a damn ball machine but when you're not having anybody to play tennis with or whatever I just I do my best to, to make good with what I have and when I'm on the other side as I said I practice I practice hitting those cones in different positions that's why I have good accuracy as far as like most, some of my shots are very accurate, I can I can flick the ball up sometimes. I practice that for defense in case you just uh, like for serve return to serve. That's like how return to serve. Sometimes you don't get a chance to get into it. That's why them second serves when they call cupcake serves, those fellas can just and ladies can just bring their racket back and tee off on it. But when a big serve pump, you gotta just gotta get it back in play and direct it. But when you get a chance to get through it, you can actually put a lot of pace on it, hit you down the line, 
And I practice hitting closer to the wines like that. Because that's a big advantage if you can pace the wines. And I actually aim, I aim for the wines, but I aim just before the wines. Try to hit it like in that. Getting on the cross for it, ball clones. Getting in the middle over there, that's pretty good, right? Then you can go even further. See how I got even closer? And uh, you put a, you put the angles. Because that's not how I was taught how to play. And if you watch Agassi or Sanders or any of those fellas back in the day, Gordon was an easy bitch. Gordon was my man. I love that dude. He was great. He's Novak's coach. I wonder if he got on Novak for tanking that match. Novak looked like he took, he tanked that match. I don't care what anybody says. And also. It kind of bothers me that there's a lot of Freemason numerology involved in some of these tournament matches. 33 game winning streak. The guy that beats him, his name is Sinner. People are betting huge amounts of money for Novak to beat this dude. I was looking at the betting, and when he won the third set, people were dropping big time money for him to do a comeback. And then him praying the trees and talking about you know numerology that adds up to 666 our world is infested with, with with satanic rituals on a daily like my wife and just asked me today uh, i guess a little joshua wants to go to a concert a uh, travis scott concert and i'm like that dude didn't he just a few years a couple of people die at this concert that you guys at i mean he had a concert there was like people that died and there was all kinds of weird shit going on with his concert you know Luciferian diabolical type stuff going on while he's playing his music. I, I don't want no parts of that shit. Uh, I, as a Christian, or as a person who believes in Yahshua Hamashiach, the Christ Jesus, I, I wouldn't. I don't want to be around that type of stuff. And unfortunately, because of my uh, my spirituality, I pick up on a lot of things that are going on in pro sports, especially in the NFL. The NFL is gone. It's co totally corrupted by Freemasonry, uh, Luciferian and stuff. And I try to tell people not to bet on these games because you never know. And they say, hey, Sean, who's, your, who's gonna win the Super Bowl? I said at the beginning of the year, the 49ers were gonna play the Miami Dolphins because I thought that would be the best matchup in Vegas. But I forgot about Tra Travis Kelsey with this big stuff going on with his girlfriend uh, that looks like a guy, <laughs> Taylor Swift or whatever. And um, so I'm going to, 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 like I said, uh, once the playoffs started, I said Chiefs and, and 49ers, and the Chiefs will win again in some weird way like they did last year. I literally called the score 38-35. I said the Eagles will lose the game 38-35 in the fourth quarter. And uh, that was right about that. And one of my friends would like bet on that shit and won over $10,000, which I told him not to bet, but he won. Listen to me. Uh, so I'm going to say the same thing. It's fake football, and in tennis, I have concerns with steroids, and, and, and some of these fellas are on steroids, and I'm concerned about that because I don't want to see people die young, because you, you're gonna die young, you're gonna get heart attack from that stuff, so uh, I just had suspicions about the, you know, the match uh, with uh, Novak. He looked like he totally tanked the match, in my opinion. Uh, he's the number one player in the world. Guys like that don't make mistakes like that. There's many mistakes he was making. I always get back. And I don't get mad. I like these people. I just don't think they understand the consequences of their actions and what kind of stuff they're getting themselves involved in. With this witchcraft and pagan rituals and stuff. You're dealing with your immortal, immortal soul. And you know, I like know that and I like I like I like all the players on the tour. I so I want the best for all of them. But as I said, there was a lot of money involved in that match. If you look it up on the internet, you can see, wow, come on, come on. You can see that there was a lot of money being made on that. And, and you know, Vegas is going to get paid folks. They ain't going to give out that money for nothing like that. Uh, people will think they can just go and bet on stuff. And tennis is the second biggest betting uh, venue in the world behind uh, soccer. People bet on tennis all the time. And that's why they got people, they catch people taking matches for money. They get paid money to take the match because there's more money for them to take the match than they actually win in a tournament.
financial it, it's a really good shot on it. Like I say, but with this bracket being a wide body, you really got to keep your eye on the ball. You'll end up framing it. Plus, it's just fun. And I don't want people to get mad at my opinion. You can believe whatever you want. And as I say, I like these people. I like the people playing on a tour. But when you're starting to tell people, little kids, to pray to trees and do all kinds of weird pagan stuff, that's that stuff that should be private. If you want to do, do, get into witchcraft and do that kind of stuff, that should be private. And you shouldn't be promoting it to little kids. So that's just my thing. I don't promote nothing to little kids that's not going to benefit their life in a positive way. Like I say, I like the handle because it's a little smaller than the four and a half. So if I can get a couple more of these things at four and three eighths. Get some decent swing on it. Maybe we might be able to do something. That would be wicked on clay. If you had a clay for it, then that'd be wicked spot there. Balls, not bad, and uh, I like this. Uh, I like this swings place. I got got it at the, at the Goodwill, and I have a total of I have seven of these rackets. One of them being the 110, and then the rest of them are are 95s. And I got literally like I had two of them. on like ten. So ten. I spent close to a hundred bucks and I got four more rackets, or three more rackets, uh, these types, so when I talk to some people about getting a custom racket made, I'm just going to give them this and say, hey, take this down a little bit, make it thinner, take the weight out of the handle, make it more head heavy, and we're in business. Although I, it feels like they say,
water. Water is important. Looks like I took like a shower, fellas, ladies. <laughs> Look at this. So I say, just knocking the stuffing off that English muffin. Whew! Oh my goodness. Thanks for watching, folks. I'm gonna go get some water, pick up these cones. Go see what my lady's doing. It's Saturday. Maybe we'll do something for dinner or whatever. I'm not sure. But be out here tomorrow. We'll make another video. I appreciate all your support. I appreciate all, all the kind words. And I appreciate your, uh, you know, uh, everybody coming together as a community and helping each other learn the game of tennis and helping each other that are disabled and going through life and having some problems. We're here to help. We'll do what we can do. Uh, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Just remember, God loves you and so do I. And with all my heart, thank you.